Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're starting a new aquascape. I want to do a Dutch style aquarium. I should say Dutch inspired because I'm sure there will be some rules that I'm not gonna follow, but that's less important. What I want is to create a lush, pretty formal underwater garden. For those of you who don't know, Dutch style aquascapes revolve around plant growth and how beautiful and luscious the plants are. They don't necessarily follow the idea that the tank needs to be natural or present a natural scape. Those are the nature aquariums. And Dutch styles are my absolute favorite. Sadly, they're not really all that popular because they do require a little bit more maintenance and people tend to believe they're a little bit more difficult to achieve, which is actually not true. And for a person such as myself, which is not very good with design generally, I find they're a lot easier to scape and to think about than a nature aquarium. That's what we're gonna start to do today. As you can see, I have a tank here being leak tested. There are no leaks, which is great. It is a Blau 80 liter, just like my other tanks pretty much. I really do enjoy this size and I do enjoy this aquascaper line they came out with that does not have those rounded corners. Also, the glass is low iron, so it's really clear and it's thicker than the previous models, which makes me feel a little better. So let's drain all of this water and start adding the soil. Alrighty, so the tank is empty, time to place the substrate. I will be using the Tropica soil, but before that, on the bottom, I want to add some nutrition capsules. This will be a very, very, very heavy planted tank. It's not going to have wood or anything of the sorts. Epiphyte plants? I don't think so. I think everything will be planted in the soil. So I'm going to need a little bit of a booster in comparison to my other setups. So these capsules look kind of like pills, which is a little concerning. Don't let these things just lying around the house if you're ever going to use them because they look like pills or candy or something. Make sure you hide these things very well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add three of them, but I'm going to open them. Let's see. Oh, this is not as easy as I thought it would be. So I'm going to add three of these capsules. And now time to add the Tropica soil. Alrighty, so what I wanna do is make areas that will not reflect on the other side. If you know a thing or two about aquascaping, you know that if you put a plant here, you kinda need to put it here as well for added symmetry. We're not going for that today. We are going for getting in here a variety of plants with different textures, which hopefully will contrast off of each other. We'll see if I can pull it off and we need to limit or determine their placement really, really well and leave about an inch or two centimeters or so in between the areas. So I'm gonna start with the back. Here, I want to have an area like so maybe of something then I'm gonna leave space in between these areas. We're gonna have another area of something. I'm running out of skewers. Maybe I'm gonna use less of these. Okay. I'm gonna see as I go if I wanna make the areas a little bit tinier. I kinda wanna give enough for each plant to show its greatness, but at the same time, what if I don't have enough plants <laughs> to fill these areas? So. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna make these areas a little bit tinier so that I have four distinct areas in the back as such. Alrighty. So we have four distinct areas in the back for four different plants. I'm not sure yet what plants. Next, I think I wanna go with the foreground. I want to have a distinct area, let's say here, and a distinct one here, and another one in the middle and I'm running out of these wood sticks. I thought I was doing something interesting, but I'm not obviously. <laughs> so we will have another area here. Not sure if I'm gonna delimit it and everywhere in between these areas, mid ground. So this will be foreground plants. This will be the back. And in the mid ground, again, I think I will have four distinct areas. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this as this and I'm gonna start to prepare my plants. I'm gonna start, I do believe, with the back and then the front and then mid last. I always tend to keep mid for last because I, I cannot envision it. I need to see what's going on in the back and in the front and then I'll decide what to do in the middle. Is that weird? Does anybody else do that? 
Anyway, let's get the plants ready. Alrighty, so it is time to add the filter. For this tank, I'm gonna use the Denerle Scapers Flow, which is somewhere in between a hang on and an internal filter. I will make sure to do a separate video on this filter because I do have thoughts on it. Anyway, more on the filter in a different video. I'm not entirely sure if it's gonna stay on this side or the other side or in the back. Gonna have to see how it works with the CO2. But what we need to do is continue to fill the tank and then add the CO2 and then play around with the flow. Okay, so I actually decided that I'm gonna put it on this side of the tank and I turned it on and it's really not very loud. There are some air bubbles that need to come out over the next few hours and those are the noisiest things. And yeah, it's definitely a little bit noisier than an internal filter in my opinion. There's nothing more silent than a good internal filter, but I think we can work with it. I don't think it's gonna really be audible when I record. Right, next up, it is time to add the CO2. So here I have, of course, my Blau system. I have been using these systems for a couple of years now, and I think they are great. I didn't have any issues with them. The solenoids are not loud at all, and they work great. Tanks, of course, refillable. And here I have a regulator with two outputs, I guess. So I can offer CO2 to two tanks. Okay, wrong choice of words, but yeah, I can offer CO2 to two tanks. <laughs> okay, these are the two tanks. The ditch that I just made and this guy, which will be a sort of an island aquascape. It's dark now because it's cycling in the dark. I didn't have plants, so I gave dark cycling a chance. We'll see how that goes. So both of these will have CO2. I will use with both of them the Twin Star diffuser, which I have to say is really good. I really like it. This is the medium size and I think it's great for the 80 liter. Also, I'm gonna use some air piping. I don't like to use those silicone pipes stuff because I find them a lot more rigid. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't have leaks or anything of the sorts with the air tubes. So yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I like using these better. Have a return valve made out of glass. This is Blau as well for this tank. And yeah, that's the whole setup. Don't worry, I will make a video explaining how CO2 setups typically work. This type of setups, there are others, but these ones are the most common because they're, I guess, the most efficient. So for those of you who didn't really understand everything that I said, don't worry, I will make a separate video. But for those of you who do have planted tanks and CO2 injection, then there you go. That is my CO2 setup. Let's assemble it now. I just noticed my hands looked <laughs> pretty gross. Sorry, I have extreme dry hands. Whenever I work with water, they get just busted. <laughs> I try to keep up with the cream so I don't look horrible on video, but you know, sometimes it's just uh, not enough. So yeah, that's why most of the times when I work with stuff, I wear gloves to protect my skin. Sometimes though, you can't, you just wanna have free hands and you start to look horrible. Sorry about that, hope <laughs> it wasn't too bad. And 
here we are we're done this is two days later and all of the plants have started to turn upright now a few things the rotella macrandra which sadly didn't look so good in the first place is melting off completely i don't know if anything will survive i hope it will at least a few stems because i can propagate it afterwards it grows quite fast but i'm not entirely sure what's going to happen in this patch i'm considering to replace it with something else which probably i will but i'm gonna let it be see if i can save a few of the stems it's a pity with rotella macrandra i just do not have any success with the in vitro cups so i'm gonna wait to find it in a pot other than that these guys which have a lot of immersed growth what i'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna let them be have a little bit of submersed growth meaning in water and then i'm gonna cut them at the base and then replant the tops which will already have submersed growth they already have a little bit do you see the leaves are starting to become thinner and thinner and have that beautiful pinkish hue to them yeah they're starting to adapt to water of course with the proserpinac i'm gonna do the same thing and everything else will just be left alone to grow and hopefully in no time things will start to grow and look a little bit more even right now nothing is even i'm happy about the waliki look at that she started to grow really nice i love that shade of pink and i'm realizing this tank will not be so green it's gonna be more on the red orange pink side which is fine um but if i'm going to replace the macrandra from here definitely i need to add there a green plant because i feel it's a little bit too much red hopefully not i love red but i feel like red stands out when it's next to green you know and too much red is, is too much even for me so we'll see we'll see about it and look at that here we are this is a few weeks later actually my life has been pretty chaotic <laughs> So I didn't really have the time to film, but the aquarium is a little bit more grown in, isn't it? So I did quite a few changes. I moved around plants. Some of them were already trimmed, some not. That's why it's a little, a little wavy, but it is filling in pretty nicely. There are some issues with some plants. Some are doing great. Overall, I'm really enjoying it. I just want these plants to fill in faster. Sometimes I complain that there is too much maintenance and I have to trim plants too often and sometimes I complain that they do not grow fast enough but they're doing okay I'm not really complaining it's starting to look nice the plants are just not all growing at the same rate so in the description of this video you'll have a full list of plants together with the equipment that I mentioned throughout this video and that I'm currently using I'll also add a few personal notes regarding how some plants are doing some are really not doing well for example the aerial caulon polaris this is a variety i've never tried before it's not working out for me at all the other one in the back the vietnam and also the cinereum which i used to have they do good for me but this guy does not i don't know why so i'll have a few notes down below i'm really happy that my cryptocorn pink flamingo is doing fantastic she's let's say the spotlight of this tank and yeah in the future i just need to balance the plants out a little bit more some of them are not actually growing as tall as i thought some are growing taller than i thought so i will be moving them around a little bit and yeah as time passes it's absolutely fine to pull some out and bring in some other ones which will complete the aquascape better i did use some plants that i've never used before so i really didn't know how tall they would grow but anyway it is a learning curve and i'm really enjoying the dutch this tank is very well balanced right now i do not have algae almost at all not even on the glass which is concerning because my autosynclus i don't know what they're eating i'm considering putting them in the other tank which has been debalanced by the experiment with the dosator from the nerle it wasn't ready it wasn't okay so slowly and surely the algae are wearing off the other tank if you missed that video i'll link you to it down below but i think i'm gonna move the autosynclus from this tank to that one because there's a lot more food there here there's nothing so i'm happy i don't have algae but on the other hand yeah the autos i don't know what they're eating and regarding the livestock that you see in this tank oh brother there's a mix there right well not everybody will stay here 
I made an impulse buy, I have some endlers. I wanted to make a tank with life bearers, but I did not find any females, just males. So I have a bunch of males there, which will go in a different tank. I'm not sure which one, I'll have to choose. And I also have a beautiful Hellboy Bera there, which look how beautiful he is as he's darting across the front of the aquarium. I think he wants food, he always wants food. A uh, little update and a little sad news which happened a little while back. Uh, Mango passed after three and something years with me, so if I'm not mistaken, I think he was about three and a half or four years old, which is quite a lot for a betta fish. He did not have any disease that I can tell. It really looked like old age and I think I told you in the dosator. <laughs> dosator, I don't know how to say it in English. Dosator. In that video I told you that Mango is kind of lazy lately. He's not getting so excited about food anymore. He looks old. He acts old and in the end yeah he just really passed away peacefully from what I could tell. So I, I'm happy I gave him what I believe to be a good life. It's not like Charlie, if you remember Charlie, that guy had an issue that I could not fix. But since I lost Mango, I thought, well, you know what, I'm ready for a new beta. So I got Hellboy over there, which that's the name of the variety, Hellboy. And his name is Hellboy. Very creative of me, right? Yeah. So livestock, yeah, it's a mumbo jumbo right now, but everything will go probably in different tanks. I am already doing another scape, which will be very nice for Hellboy, because right here he doesn't have any wood, any anything, right? Yeah, it's just temporary. He's gonna have a different tank. But anyway, enough blabbing. That is it for this tank. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Stay tuned for more aquarium videos on this channel. So subscribe if you're into aquascaping and fishkeeping in general. And I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye!